Good morning, my friends. This is Buddha's meditation manual. I am Lama Jigme Gyatso. Welcome to the Buddha Joy Meditation School. This is an ongoing commentary to the Maha Sati Patana Sutta, which, when translated from the Pali into English, is the greater discourse upon the four bases of mindfulness. To get the most out of this, be sure to download your free copy using the first link in the doodly do. I recommend uh, downloading a free the free Kindle app to your smartphone. That way, you can navigate the PDF with ease. We are still on the first base of mindfulness. We are on the section where we are now bringing our mindfulness into the four metaphoric elements. Um, yesterday we did the first two and today we'll do the second two. <coughs> Pardon. Please join me on page 33. We bring our attention to the fire element. This is exceptionally useful when you feel that it's time to assert yourself, but you do not feel up to the task. This is great as a substitute for morning caffeine. I want to give you a quick warning if you choose to phase caffeine out of your life. Number one, go cold turkey. Number two, give yourself permission to feel like crap for about three to five days. Why will you feel like crap? Because your body will be detoxing amphetamine. You'll have a bad headache, a bit of crankiness, and a bit of lethargy. When you feel those symptoms, bear in mind that is your body's reaction to a poison. Some people say, but coffee is natural. So is hemlock. <laughs> so is monkey poop. <laughs> so, no hemlock, monkey poop, or caffeine for you, okay? Thank you. <laughs> We're going to start off with a rhetorical question. If this is your first time tuning in to my talking head, Go back to the first video in this series. How will you find it? Simple. When you download the PDF, you'll notice that um, from page 33 to page 1 is full of links. At least one link per page of guided meditation. And they will take you to videos on YouTube that will explain the surrounding text. But that's enough for that. The first guided meditation on the page reads as follows. Where, feel, bodies, fire, element, and on the out-breath, relaxing. The second exercise on this page uses the triple grin. Grin with lips to body's fire, relaxing.
Grin with cheeks to body's fire, relaxing. Grin with eyes to body's fire, relaxing. Now we turn our attention to the fourth of the metaphoric elements. Now, quick aside. By playing with our elements, we are able to make subtle adjustments to our body, our mind, our emotions, our experience. But here's a quick word of caution. Buddha's path is not one of contrivance. In my youth, I was enthusiastic about NLP and many of the practices made popular by Tony Robbins. I hung out with people like that, and I was dissatisfied with my results. I like the idea that Tony Robbins is as good-hearted as he is enthusiastic, and that he really means well. But neither Buddha nor Lao Tzu endorse the path of contrivance. They instead endorse the path of centeredness, surrender, and spontaneity. Spontaneity is the opposite of contrivance. If we use these eight contemplations of the four elements to manipulate ourselves will be doing yourself a great disservice. They are tools of mindfulness and they are tools of preparation, not to take away our sufferings, but to help us gain the wherewithal to be able to apply the teachings with greater skill to our life. <coughs> As you may have surmised thus far, the Mahasatipatthana Sutta is a meditation manual. It is not saying, you know, never feel that, never feel this, only feel that. Not at all. It's saying, okay, when you feel that, let's play with this exercise. When you play with, when you feel that, let's play with that exercise. It's a way of using our mindfulness to, to make the most of every circumstance, whether it's glorious or whether it's grotesque, to help us be the people that our dogs already think we are. As we go through our life, there are times when we can be so focused on the details, on the minutia of the moment, if you will, that we lose sight of the big picture. And uh, simultaneously we'll lose our joy, we'll lose our love, we'll become more cranky or frightened. <coughs> Many people feel that's a way to gain leverage on themselves and make things happen, but neither of which were endorsed by Lao Tzu or Gautama Buddha. So a quick way to see the forest for the trees is to explore our air element. Third exercise on page 33. Where feel body's air element? Relaxing. And for the fourth exercise, we return to the simple grin. Grin to body's air elements, relaxing. <coughs> A 
And that, my friends, is all the instruction you get today. Remember, or as we traverse the path of the teachings, it's important not to sprint, but to stroll. Not to be like a crashing wa waterfall, but like a meandering stream. And that does not mean I suggest you practice once a month. I want all my students to practice every morning and every evening. Want to do more than that? Cool. But at least once every morning, at least once every evening. But I, what I'm saying is progress gently. If you start off the first week meditating five minutes in the morning and five minutes in the evening, then the second week, do it for 10 minutes, twice a day. Next week, 15 minutes, twice a day. The next week, 20 minutes, twice a day. Progress gently and methodically. It's far better to progress slower than you desire to. And experience what, what I like to call um, divine impatience. Then to push yourself too hard, too fast, and turn meditation into a quasi-spiritual death march. Please don't do that. No, no, no. <laughs> If you have any questions about these exercises, please write them below in the comments section. Over the last many centuries, Buddhism, Buddha's teachings have been confused with the neo taoist teachings and with many of the Hindu teachings. They're different. All of Buddha's meditation instructions are found in the Mahasati Patana Sutta. If applied, the text ensures the reader that full enlightenment can be achieved in less than a decade, in less than a year, in less than a quarter, in less than a month, in less than a fortnight. That is awesome. Now, do we believe it maniacally? Don't believe in believe. But give it a shot. The test of the teachings are not whether or not they are familiar. They're not whether they the test of the teachings is not whether they appeal to your logic or to your intuition. The test of the teachings is quite simple. Play with them twice daily for a week. Notice your results. If you got crap results, go find a better teacher. But if you got some pleasant results, some favorable, favorable results, then continue to receive the teachings and continue to apply them. Just as the proof of the pudding is in the tasting, likewise, the proof of the teachings is in their consistent application. In the folly of my youth, the folly of my arrogance. I would look at a teaching and say, oh, I can improve that easy. After a while, I was frustrated with my growth, or lack thereof. And I began applying the teachings with a bit more humility. And then I really got some great results. So let's do that. Let's Before we try to improve the teachings, Let's try to practice them on Buddha's terms and see just how effective they are. Gamble! For, okay, so if you spend five minutes twice a day for a week, how many minutes is that? Well, let's see. Seven times five is 35. So you're gambling with about a half hour of your life. Okay, cowboy, I think you can do that. That's all you get today. I, uh, if I can be of further service, please make use of the links in the doodly-doo. And remember, I charge for none of my teachings. It's all by donation. Some give big, some give little, some give none. Just use the teachings. That's all I ask. May you and yours be healthy and happy. Bye-bye now.